C-SPAN show Washington Journal had a conversation about civil rights on Thursday. And then, as they often do on C-SPAN, they actually open up the phone lines and people can call in. And, my goodness, about 14,762 insane racists called up. I think the blacks have brought on uh, most of their uh, present-day problems themselves. Uh, they insult white people. I've heard them insult. I've heard it already right here on your own show. I heard some some uh, black call uh, call Roe a white boy, and I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're attacking white people in the big cities, and we're supposed to put up with that kind of stuff and like them and say, well, come on into our neighborhood. Uh, and how about the, a discussion of some of the black crime that goes on in this, in this country? You people will never will discuss that, and you won't discuss discrimination against uh, uh, Irish. How about the Irish? They were discriminated against. So were the, the Mormons, uh, the Italians. You people will never, never discuss that. You only discuss discrimination against the black uh, people. And uh, their poor schools, you say, we pour more money into their schools than mm -hmm. we do into any white schools, predominantly white schools. Thomas, and, have uh, you felt discrimination in your life? Have I felt? Uh, yes, I have felt discrimination in my life. Yes, because I am of Irish descent, I have felt it, yes. Okay, Thomas, thanks very much for the call. That's with us. Uh, this is from Danny, who says, The racist are those who set out to destroy the nation's white identity. That is racist. Joint point, we'll go to Joe in North Olmsted, Ohio. Good morning. Welcome to the conversation. Good morning. I think there's a war on white men in this country from liberal white women that claim there's a war against women. No country has ever created more things for for the betterment of mankind's living than the Caucasian race that came from Europe. And I'm sick and tired as an octogenarian hearing all this bad-mouthing of white people. Where else would people in America of color or any other race want to go to live other than America? And I think it's time for white men to start standing up because there's all kinds of groups for other races. And I think it's time for white pride. We have built this country, Irish, Italians, Germans, Irish, wherever they have come from, from Europe. No country in the world has produced what the white man has produced for every culture and race in America. On the Republican line, Terry is joining us from Canton, North Carolina. Good morning, Terry. Good morning. How are you this Fine, morning? Fine, thank you. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, I've had, it just kind of offends me so bad to listen to people calling in about Dixie Kratz. Uh I think it was Supreme Court Justice, uh, Mr. Thomas had said that uh, he's experienced more racism in this country from northern liberal elites than he has from anywhere. Uh, I'm kind of like the last guy. The white man has done more for the black man in this country. I think the black man owes the white man a thank you. Oh. Oh, that was painful to listen to. <sighs> My goodness. <laughs> they, those people, they're, they're insane. They're insane. I mean, uh, what, uh, how do you describe that? I mean, a, a psychologist can have a field day. That's a mix of everything. Indoctrination, uh, ignorance, lack of education, stupidity, low IQs. I mean, the comments they made, I was jotting it down as they went along. The first guy said, uh, I didn't like the blacks called Carl Rove a white boy. Black caller called Carl Rove a white boy. That's not right. Do you not realize the irony in that very sentence you said? The, a, a black called Carl Rove a white boy, and that's not right. Well, you just called him a black. You're doing the same thing you think is bad. But see, that's the thing. These guys, they're, it's impossible. They don't know how to turn the criticism inward. They don't know how to evaluate their own actions by the same standards that they're apparently trying to apply to black people here. So what do they do? They just lash out. Everything black people ever do is wrong. Everything white people do is fucking fantastic. And then the other idiot, the next idiot, was like, Well, I Irish and Mormons and Italians were discriminated against. I don't hear you talking about that. Well, that's right, because uh, they... 
were discriminated against. Keyword were discriminated against. And let's be clear, man, while there certainly was discrimination against the Irish and the Italians, etc., etc., it wasn't to the extent that it was against black people, okay? Let's keep it real historically. 250 years of slavery uh, of black people, followed by Jim Crow, followed by uh, segregation and separate but equal, I mean, to this day, there's a lot of racism. It's not the same. N n as of today, the Irish, the Italians, everybody, they uh, have now been accepted by the wasps and by the overt racists. Okay, so it, it's not the same. That's a false equivalence to say it was equally as bad. It's certainly a topic of conversation and an interesting one where we could talk about the discrimination against those people. But don't try to compare the two. It wasn't the same. And as of today, there's virtually no more discrimination against Irish, Italians. Uh, Mormons, you maybe can make a little bit of a case for that. But usually it's the fundamentalists who actually do a lot of very strange things. Um, and then one of them said, black schools get more money than white schools. That is one of the most not true things I've ever heard in my life. The way, you have to understand, the way that most schools are funded across the U.S. is from, uh, property taxes within, you know, local regions. And what often happens is, in predominantly African-American neighborhoods, uh, the incomes are lower and more people rent in the areas. Okay, so they, people aren't paying property tax as much. There's not nearly as much money to go into the schools. So you have old textbooks, you have shitty teachers, and they don't end up getting an equal education and a fair education. The idea that they have more money than white schools, that's insane. That, that honestly is from fucking Neptune. Okay, that dude's out of his mind, man. That dude's Looney Tunes all day long. Uh, and then one of them says, uh, Racists in this country are destroying our white identity. Yeah, uh, this country is not a white country. It's not just a Caucasian country, okay? I mean, it's so silly, the idea that uh, it's the racists who are destroying our white identity. Really? But you're not racist for thinking the country is purely white? That would be racist. A and then one of the guys goes, well, uh, white people built this country. Oh, <laughs> my blood was boiling and I'm a white dude. I can only imagine what a black person goes through or what any minority goes through when they hear something like that. That's just pure hatred being spewed from the depths of an ignorant soul, okay? It, again, 250 years of slavery, it, the slaves absolutely built this country, okay? And not just the slave labor from African Americans, but uh, Asians built the railroad, for example. I mean... The idea that, oh, the, only the white people should get credit. That's insane. I mean, look, if anything, sure, white people get credit for some things, but, I mean, you also got to put the blame where the blame belongs. It was white people that did westward expansion and did the Trail of Tears and did the Native American genocide and white people that did uh, slavery. So please, man, they just gloss over facts of history. They act like, no, put that aside, brush that under the rug. That's not relevant to the conversation. Of course it's relevant to the conversation! Enslaving people for 250 years and wiping out the Native Americans? That's the single biggest piece of evidence when talking about this issue. But he's just like, no, just give us credit for everything and uh, black people credit for nothing. I insane racism. And, I mean, think about it, man. The idea that racism is dead, they are the living proof that it's not. And a lot of people think like that. Make no mistake about it, you know. We live in our little bubble. 40% of the country think Jesus is going to return by before 2050. So 40% of the country are fucking crazy, okay? What percentage are racist? I don't know, but I'd venture to say it's at least 30%, you know? I mean, the South, across the board, they still fly Confederate flags and shit. So, look, it's a bad situation, man. And so blacks were... Uh, freed, of course, after the 250 years of slavery, but then we still had Jim Crow and segregation and separate but equal, which of course wasn't equal. Things on paper weren't even equal until the mid-1960s. So to look at black people and go, it's your fault that everything, everything that happens is your fault. Well, you're disregarding systemic problems. And today we still have systemic racism and overt racism. I mean, they are the living embodiment of the problem, all of those callers. So to just give you some quick information on this, I know we've been over this a thousand times, but we can prove that racism still exists. It's a fact. So for example, there was a study about online sales, where you had a white hand holding an iPod and selling it, and then there was a different page with a black hand holding an iPod and selling it, all the information the same. 
the white hand got virtually all the hits. Just solely based off the skin color, people said, I'd rather buy from the white person. All the other information was the same. Or how about the resume study? When it's a traditionally sound, uh, African American sounding name on a resume, with all the same work experience as another resume with a white name, the white name gets virtually all the hits. Again, everything except the name. There's nothing else that could account for the disparity except uh, feelings about race. Uh, and then there was the bicycle study where I think it was ABC News, it was an investigative report, you had a, a white guy try to unchain a bicycle, okay? People would look at him like suspicious, but nobody, nobody called the cops, people just kind of walked by, right? When it was a white girl trying to unchain a bicycle, having trouble, people went out of their way to help her, okay? When it was a black guy doing the same thing, everybody called the cops. The same thing with the car study, remember that? It was on YouTube recently, that somebody uh, decided to do a little experiment, they were breaking into a car with one of those things, uh, you know, the things that they use whenever you... To, to try to pop the lock, right? And uh, when it was the white guy doing it, nobody paid attention. People just walked right by. A cop literally drove by, didn't care. When it was a black guy, people immediately called the police. When they got there, uh, slammed him against the wall and handcuffed him immediately. So many examples. The drug study. Black people and white people admit to using drugs at the exact same rate. Black people uh, get arrested four times more often. I mean, even just the, the perception, you know, of what they call... Uh, white privilege, which is the fact that if you look at a black guy who makes it, every, uh, a lot of white people dismiss it. They go, oh, affirmative action. He doesn't uh, deserve it. But then if the same black guy says, well, fuck it, I'm not even going to try because the system's geared against me, then the same group of people goes, ah, typical, what'd you expect? So wait, if they do well, they don't win because you don't give them credit. If they do poorly, you don't give them credit. So what? it's a lose-lose. So it's a fact that racism still exists, and this segment 100% proves it.